This video is supported by my brand new sound design course. Click the link in the description to learn more. For this video, I challenged myself to come up with 10 creative ways you can use granular synthesis. Let's waste no time and jump straight into idea number one, the iconic flume style pad. Please do let me know in the comments which of these is your favorite. Mine is without a doubt number 10, so make sure you stick around for that. So let's say you've got a chord progression you're happy with. The first step is to simply duplicate notes across the frequency spectrum. Assign groups of notes in your chords to different instruments, along with some kind of noise layer. Resulting in a huge layered sound. After bouncing the result, drag and drop this into your granular synth of choice. The last step is to automate the playback position, as well as potentially playing around with the octaves in your MIDI. Idea number two is granular keys. Here we have a very simple keyscape sample playing the note of C at different octaves. Simply drop your sample in, playing with things such as the source position and grain length and direction. The next idea is one you might not have expected on this list, but it's actually for bass sound design. Here we have a super simple Reese bass. Let's bounce this and drop it into our granular synth, making a few tweaks, including increasing the width and playing it an octave above our Reese layer. With a couple of tweaks to the MIDI, this can be a really cool textural layer to add to our original bass. So here we have a beautiful field recording of some birdsong from freesound.org. Samples like this can be great source material for creating weird and wonderful noise textures. These textures can be super versatile for things like layering and for background textures in a track, for example. Let's break these tips up with a fun one using whole tracks. Here I've loaded in a wonderful track from one of my all time favorite albums by a band called Beach House. Granular synthesis can provide an awesome alternative to traditional sampling, and it's just really fun to play around with. One area we've not covered in this video yet is drums. Here I've got a super simple flume inspired kick and snare sequence. Let's load this into Quanta, play around with the source position, and record the output to another audio track. We can then go through our recording and chop the sample to create some really unique drum fills that can be a great alternative to things like delay, for example.
A similar technique can also be used to create ear candy for other elements, such as vocals, for example. Do it morning, evening, through the night. We could take it fast and slow it side to side. We could do it morning, evening, through the night. Moving on to one of my favorite ideas in this video, we have granular looping. Here we have a nice piano chord progression from Splice. One really cool trick is to keep the source position random parameter quite low, but not all the way down. This means that our grains will be triggering from around the same place with very subtle variations. The grain number in Quanta is essentially how many grains are triggered per second, meaning at low amounts we get this really cool looping sound. We can then move or automate the source position to come up with a really cool chord progression. The last idea I want to share before we cover my favorite technique in this video is granular effects. Here I've layered a super simple triangle wave with some noise. If we drop this into Quanta, we can automate the tune parameter along with the grain number and length to create a really unique sounding riser effect. And finally, my absolute favorite technique in this video is granular time stretching. Some of you might be familiar with a piece of software called Paul Stretch, an extreme time stretching plugin used by countless producers to create amazing pad sounds. The way this works is by splitting an audio signal into time windows and filling in the gaps with something akin to granular synthesis. I discovered that we can actually create a very similar effect ourselves using something like Quanta. For example, here we have a lovely choir sample from Splice. All we have to do is load this into our granular synth, tweak the parameters to get a texture we're happy with, and finally automate the source position to move very slowly through the sample. Here, for example, I've set the automation to be four times the length of the original sample. There we have it. I hope you found this video useful. Please, please do let me know which of these ideas you're excited to try out. Just before you go, maybe consider checking out my new sound design course. It's currently available at an early access price, which gives you access to the over six hours of content already in there, as well as all the future content I'll be adding. For example, I just added an in-depth video on granular synthesis that goes into a lot more detail than I can in a YouTube video like this one. Whether you're a total beginner or a more experienced producer, the course contains everything you need to make the sounds you love and stand out from the crowd. Again, I definitely recommend getting the early access price while you can. The price of the course will be going up as new content is added over time. I hope to see you in there. Thanks for your support and I'll see you in the next video.